Hi everybody, Mark Subsick here. I'm a certified wine professional and a partner with Wine Still Sold Out. Welcome to our next weekly tasting. If you just mention the word wine, one of the very first things that comes to mind is the country of Italy. And there's a good reason for that. Italy has over 350 different kinds of grapes and hundreds of different styles of wine. And with 1.7 million acres of vines, they're the largest producer in the world. There are so many different wonderful grapes and wines being made in Italy, it's really hard to keep up. And what makes it additionally difficult is that they label their wines based on the region where it's produced. So it's hard to know what's in the bottle. For this weekly tasting, we're going to expand our Italian wine knowledge by at least one more grape and two more wines. We're gonna discuss the Nebbiolo grape and two very famous regions, Barolo and Gattinara. So Italy is divided into 20 different administrative regions. Each one of them has its own personality, its own culture, its own food, and of course its own wine too. The Nebbiolo grape itself makes its home in Piemonte, or Piedmont, in the far northwestern corner of the country. And as the name Piedmont suggests, this region sits at the foot of the Swiss Alps and also borders with France. The Nebbiolo grape is known to have existed in this part of Italy since at least the 1300s where it's mentioned in local documents. And the name Nebbiolo is derivative of the word Nebbio, which is Italian for fog. There's this dense fog that rolls in over the vineyards in October during the harvest, and this makes perfect sense. Interestingly enough, for centuries, these wines were often made as sweet and sometimes even bubbly wines because winemakers were having a hard time controlling the fermentation process. So it wasn't until the 1800s when local nobility put their money and their power behind these wines. They even hired some French consultants to come in and help them with the process, and they boosted them up to the quality level that we know today. And for this reason, to this day, Barolo in particular is known as the wine of kings and the king of wines. So that's Nebbiolo 101. Hope that gives you enough background. But there really is no better teacher than actual hands-on experience. So now it's time for us to taste these wines. As always, I provided a little learning aid here for you that I designed myself. You can always download this by using the link provided below the video. This is the 2015 Barolo from Serra de Roveri. Right away, you're gonna notice that this is very clear and translucent. And that's because the uh, Nebbiolo grape itself is very thin skinned. You don't get a lot of color extract out of a thin skinned grape. Because it's a thinner skin grape, it has fewer antioxidants in it, which means that it's gonna oxidize and change color faster. And you can see here for five years old, this wine is already starting to turn like a beautiful mahogany color. All right, everybody give it a little swirl now. This is through the roof as far as the aromatics are concerned. I get smells that remind me of almost like uh, being in a hot house full of roses. One thing that's universally true about Nebbiolo wines is that they are typically very high in acid. You might have a sensation in your mouth right now, you're salivating or you're drooling. That's your body's natural response to the acids in the wine. Something else you may be noticing about this wine right off the bat is that it's pretty tannic. The Nebbiolo grape can be super tannic. In fact, some old school versions of these wines can take years and years for them to soften up. And the other thing you may notice right away is that these wines are higher in alcohol. This one in particular is 14.5%. It's just like a flavor explosion in the glass. This is only a five-year-old Barolo, so this has years and years to age and change. Complex flavors in there. There's the red pomegranate, sort of like those uh, cherry candies or those strawberry candies that you get around the holidays. And yes, there's the roses and the violets, and then there's this finish of vanilla in the background. I would love to come back in 15 years and see what this beauty tastes like. Let's check out this 2011 Gattinara from Giuseppe Bianchi. One of the minor differences between Barolo and Gattinara is that uh, Gattinara wines tend to see more oak aging. This has spent 36 months in French oak, and I think we're probably going to be able to smell and taste that. There's that classic uh, sort of mahogany or like cinnamon color. Let's give it a swirl. It's still super intense and true to form. With uh, a lot of Nebbiolo wines, there's that sort of roses and violets in there, very floral and aromatic. And just ever so slightly lingering in the background is the aroma of tar. Asphalt. I know that sounds bizarre, but that's actually a signature aroma and flavor for aging Nebbiolo. As you would expect from Nebbiolo, this is a powerful wine. The acids are high. The alcohol is fairly high. It's 13.5% in this example. The tannins are really super impressive on this. And I think that's coming from the 36 months of French oak. There's still some fruit elements in there. There's uh, tart cranberry. There's some baked strawberry pie in there, I think. But there are some more mature elements coming through now. You're starting to see some spice, almost like cinnamon and leather in there. And of course, then there's a hint of that tar that we talked about. 
It's nine years young. I think it's still got a lot of life left in it. I would love to come back and taste that in like 10 years and see how it's going. Italian Barolo and Gattinara are two of the most food friendly wines in the world. And for that reason, we should probably talk about some food pairings because you're gonna get some recipes along with this pack. The first recipe in the pack is for a lamb sausage stuffed mushroom. And I think that's gonna be a beautiful pairing with these earthy Nebbiolo wines, especially the Gattinara, which is getting slightly older now and starting to show some of those uh, mature flavors of like leather and tobacco and spice. They're gonna be a perfect complement for the stronger flavors that you find in a lot of game meats. And in keeping with that thinking, the second recipe is for a wild boar ragu bolognese. A bolognese ragu originates in the northern part of Italy, and wild boar, called cingale there, is immensely popular too. Now it stands to reason that they would pair really well with wines that come from the same part of the world. In the wine world we say, if it grows together, it goes together, and it couldn't be more true with this pairing. Italy is the top wine producer in the world, and with over 2,000 years of honing their craft, I think it's safe to say we can trust in this system. So now with this newfound knowledge, hopefully you can at least go to your local wine store and you have two more selections in your arsenal. I promise I'm going to make you a savvy wine drinker, one glass at a time. Of course, the conversation doesn't have to stop here. If you have any thoughts or feedback or questions, you can always drop them in the comment section below this video and I will get back to you. On behalf of Wine Still Sold Out, I'm Mark Subsick. Take care of yourself. Cheers.